Hey everybody, Robert on top10.com. Here we are, strolling through Wimbledon Village. Uh, on the way to go and see an exhibition by the painter, Royal Academician, Fred Cooming. Uh, Fred Cooming, I mean, he's 92, still painting. Um, he lives in Rye, often paints uh, sort of seascapes, um, pictures of uh, like uh, canvas sands. Um, I think they're incredibly beautiful uh, sort of paintings. Real, he's got a real sort of colorist kind of touch. Really beautiful, amazing colors. Um, and yeah, I think it'd be quite interesting. He's probably not what you would call a contemporary artist, which is quite an interesting discussion in itself. I mean, he's alive, he's painting things you can see, but why you wouldn't necessarily call him a contemporary artist is another discussion. Um, what is it? Do contemporary artists deal with contemporary ideas? Is that it? Anyway, interesting, because at the same time, you could kind of call him like a, a contemporary impressionist, potentially. Anyway, uh, should be quite um, interesting this exhibition. It's uh, put on by the Stafford Gallery and it's at the Wimbledon Fine Art up here down in the village when we eventually get there. Just a bit of a uh, delay. I've got my dog with me today, Jeffrey. So I've um, just got to stop every so often while he goes to sniff stuff. Um, and uh, we, yeah, heading down. There's also some paintings by. Uh, uh, Fred Cooming's son, who I think it's called Danny, who passed away. Um, it'd be quite interesting to see them, because they probably are what you describe as more contemporary. Anyway, we are nearly there, it's just around the corner, so um, uh, let's see what happens as we get there. Just wandering up to Wimbledon Fine Art. It's just down here on the end of this bit of the road. So let's um, head over there and see what's happening in this exhibition. We've just got to get past this road. Right, come on everybody, let's go. And here we are, Woman of Fine Art. Let's go for it. Okay guys, so uh, here we are in the exhibition. Um, let me try and find a classic kind of, I suppose this is more like a sort of classic uh, Fred Cooming painting where you've got like a, where is that? Low tide cloud formation, I'm guessing that is like a canvas sand. But, um, but look, you've got, it's quite interesting actually, you've got quite a lot more heavy brush strokes uh, than I've seen in some of But what you've got, I always love, is like these backgrounds. You've got a lovely, lovely different colours built up in those backgrounds. Ages of time spent building and building and building up till you get to the, the final top colours. And then if you like, look, there's this one down here. What I like on these is you've got like that beautiful sort of subtle pinky little clouds just popping out. Really nice that kind of colour usage. So let's move back around here. So this is Moonrise Camber. Yeah, so that's like a Camber Sands painting, which is cool, isn't it? Got the nice moon. Actually, it's quite um, more scratchy. You see the board coming through. I think they're almost always oil on board paintings. Oh, look at that, that's nice with that. Okay. It's actually really, really good colours in that. It's got amazing kind of ochres with little pinks that's lurking in it. And then you've got these lovely kind of just yellow sort of archway in it. I think something I read before recently rather than saying he was trying to get more abstract in what he in what he does, so Maybe the paintings have been going more abstract. This is actually rather nice as well, like a landscape. Look at it, you've just got these lovely trees floating on top of that beautiful background. I do always like these backgrounds, they're so cool. There's lovely pinks lurking down here. Really good stuff. One of the kind of bigger sort of seascapes, they're like crashing waves going through it. Look at that lovely pink up in the top right hand corner. Actually it's more of a violet and more of a sort of yellowy slash ochre colour. Like hard to define what colour that is. But I mean I guess that's one of the beautiful things about it that you can't quite pin it down too easily what the colour actually is. Oh look at that, that's really cool. What's that called? Cloud formation, Romney Marsh. And you got a really nice sense of that impending storm coming there. And I always like this at the front, you've often got kind of mad, crazy sort of paintwork, really oh, scratched on, bringing up this kind of crazy vibe to the whole thing. 
I mean, look at this, it's got lovely colours, this one down here as well. That crazy sort of ready orangey tree and there's lovely browns in the corner. It really does manage to get those colours. Beautiful. What I actually really like about this is if you look there on the left, you can still see the board at the bottom probably with like a raw umber basic colour and then I think on top of that, that blue and white's gone on top or if maybe that's even under that actually. It's quite interesting, quite hard to actually work out how the layering's done which is one of those clever things as it really builds up that kind of vibe for the whole thing. Here we go, another little late evening seascape. Instantly loads of these paintings of Seoul actually. Look at that, that's got amazing colours as well. Really kind of misty, kind of glowing seascape to it. And over here, these are some of the paintings by his son who passed away uh, a few years ago. Um, which is quite interesting because on the way here I was chatting obviously about is, is like Fred Keeming a contemporary artist but I think you, you would say his son is a contemporary artist he's doing more like I mean you know this has got more of that sort of classic contemporary stuff you know it's sort of a shop um, and you've got things written on here so boring when doors shut when the open so boring so you've got sort of text in it that's a print actually yeah, I know people who were, so Danny Pockets is his name. I know people who were taught by him. He said he was an absolutely fantastic teacher. But the paintings are actually really interesting as well. It's interesting, they've got a kind of slight vibe of Fred Kooming, but with a different vibe attached to it. This one here, Brighton Pier. Another print, looks really cool. With that kind of crazy pink splattered paint coming around it. And then down here, here, these are, so what is that, that's oil on board, bulldozer on Hastings Beach, rather nice bulldozer actually. I like that, yeah, you've got more of a kind of contemporary spray painted sort of Sigma Polka, Andy Warhol bit at the bottom and then you've got the painting coming on top. But it's a hard thing to uh, get yourself known as a contemporary artist these days, if you think there are 55,000 artists in the UK alone. So, I mean, you are fighting like mad to try and get noticed within that kind of contemporary art world, Cloud Study English Channel. So that's not like what you might call like a more classic kind of Frakumi with a picture over the uh, sea. Look at that, with the lovely clouds. Actually, Fred wrote in the front of the brochure you've got here. Fill me while I read it out. Colour, mood and atmosphere have become increasingly important to my work over the years. I'm fascinated with how colour can influence the mood of a landscape. I often start with one idea in my mind and then find myself wandering in a completely different direction from where I started. In the process of painting, new ideas emerge naturally as one idea sears you towards another. I will notice a play of light on the objects in my studio in the morning and the evening and develop an idea from there. I will always learn from my past work make reference to it, to see how it could suggest something that could improve my future work. Interesting actually. Interesting. Look at that, you've got a lovely big moon there like you do, moon-like study. Cool. I'll actually say they're slightly, slightly different to the ones I've seen before in that I would say they're slightly more painterly and they're slightly more texture. You can see the texture in the back of here, like here in that top left corner. You can see that kind of, you know, what I absolutely love is you can see that paint sort of slithering over the background, which is quite intriguing. And then you've got that lovely blue sea sliding along the bottom. But actually, but I think these are sometimes some of the best ones. Like one like this, Red Dawn, because you've got a kind of crazy, like, beautiful, um, you know, you've just got so many colours in there, but they're not interfering with each other as such. Look, you've got that lovely kind of, ah, oh, again, sort of raw, umbery, ochre, pinky colour mixed up. And then you've got that nice, that sort of, weirdly enough, just that kind of quite delicate kind of ochre colour is, you know, almost a sort of highlight towards there. And come over here, Moonlight Study 1. Oh, I like this one here. Bonfire Dungeon Earth. Look at that. That's actually quite crazy, all the paint marks and that. Quite wild. It's enough quite big brushes in here as well as small. And look, you can see it's really scratchy. 
scratchy, scratchy into the canvas. I can't tell if that's actually been quite tell if that's actually been scratched into or if that's just the brush marks. Oh, because of course, yes. I think he primes all these boards himself, okay, so well, potentially you've just got the gesso is setting up a kind of scratchy surface for you to work into anyway, which is quite intriguing. But anyway, yeah, it's really nice how that works. Yeah, the, yeah, the red nice little one here, Squale Dungeness. Cool little one there with the clouds flying around. Oh, and these, these are quite interesting. Fred Keeming Sunset Hastings Pier 2021. Look at that, really nice, kind of crazy, pinky green sky. I almost can't help feeling it sort of created quite a long time in the background and then the rest of it happens quite quickly. Look at yeah. those lovely sort of blue, smudgy shapes down there. No, no, it wouldn't be that. And over to here, this one. No, no, that's fine. No, Cloud I Formation of Folkestone. And I know what those are about. It's intriguing. Look, again, uh, it's actually quite no, no, heavily just, painted into up. the board. The it's quite intriguing. Well. I'd say they've got a sort of slightly more yeah. wild and rough vibe to them, these ones. But I mean, as I said, it's 92, so. Yeah, that's probably it. That's getting into sort of. When you get those sort of late painting vibes, you always get of yeah. artists. Oh, look at the amazing yeah. colours in this one. Walker's canvas sand. He's got a cute no, no, dog in there. No. Jeffrey will probably like that dog. No, no, I but, um, so we've got some lovely, lovely sort of subtle colours. I like really tiny little bits of uh, reds down there at the bottom, giving it a cool okay. vibe. And then Dawn Hastings yeah, I mean, Pierce. There's often quite a lot of structure. And these much more structure than you'd actually think in how these paintings are constructed. So you've got quite a heavy sense of the okay. landscape in front of you there. Look, lovely. I love that sort of. You can see the paint going on no, top of the other no, pieces of paint there. Yeah, it's really no, good. The the I did actually go and okay, interview Fred okay, Keeming about, must be about 25 years ago now. Um, that's just when I was starting my own painting. I just left the Surrey Advertiser. Where I was a politics and religion reporter, and um, I was, yeah, I thought it'd be fun to go and interview him. Basically, and it was. I went down to his house in Rye and chatted for ages. Actually, he told me all sorts of fascinating things. But it did actually make me realise that if I wanted to pursue the art properly, I'd have to go to art school. I did actually go to art school after that. Um, this is an interesting one. This is actually much more impressionisty. Where is that Hyde Canal? Quite intriguing move around a bit, try and get the light on it better. But yeah, look, I like them. It does trees in a really nice way. They're quite loose, relaxed method of painting trees. But look at these kind of really funky trees down here with those mad yellow blobs on top. That's so cool. You've just got all that beautiful scatty yellow over that beautiful background. It's got a kind of velvety, violety vibe there in the corner. It's really nicely built up, these pictures. <coughs> a rather nice boat. Interesting again, like talking about the structure. You can see the structure of those buildings sort of lurking in the corner. And you've got that mad fire. Now, somebody who wrote a book on Coleridge wrote about Fred Keeming and I cannot remember the name of the guy, but he wrote that uh, Fred was always contrasting light and electric light. So, in a way, he was looking at the effects different light sources give. So here you can see like a sort of um, moon set and a fire and even an electric light in the background. So you've got a sort of full on variety of light sources playing with you there. Come around here, Dawn Camera, which is a, another nice cool one. Look at that. Ah, oh, again, fascinating. You've still got quite a... I, I really like that when you've got the background and you can still see the ground painted on the board coming through. I always like that. It's got such a nice painterly construction to it. So cool. But then it's, it's quite different to this one, which doesn't have that, which is intriguing, isn't it? That one's much more sort of heavily painted up. Interesting. It's actually really interesting looking at the paintings from a bit more distance. You get quite a different sense of them. Actually, I like this one here in the center. You get a real kind of kind of ah, a really nice blocky structure vibe to it. That when you get closer, it 
sort of changes into something. Oh, you've still got that blocky vibe, but it's sort of, when you get up close, you get into the sense of the, the paintwork. And when you move back, you've got more of the kind of structure it creates. I remember chatting to a art teacher and I was saying I wanted to make a painting that from left to right, like, sorry, from left to right, it would like change as in a time. And he was like, I don't think you need to do that. I think he was like paintings, you know, as you walk back and forth and move in and out, they do change sort of in time and in the way you see them. Which I think is a really interesting point. It's a bit like walking around a sculpture. But, you know, as you move back and forth from a painting, it changes, which is rather nice. A lot of these actually work really well close up, but work just as well from a distance, which is quite intriguing. And there's a nice little one around here that I missed earlier, which is cool. Look at these. I like these mad breaking waves. Wind shall see. But look at that. It's such a crazy picture. Look at this. And once again, really amazing colours. Can't quite pin down what their names are, which I think is an interesting thing. I remember one of my another art teachers saying to me, you know, if you're going to use colours, try and use colours that people can't really define. And obviously you can squeeze them all out of the tube as cadmium lemon or ultramarine blue or whatever they are, but you can just, you know, juggle them up a bit. So like all these colours in this one down here, you can't quite, you wouldn't be able to exactly name what they are on the tube. They're all slightly mixed to create something. Even these ochre colours down here, they're not quite ochre. There's something else. There's a really interesting mix that sort of almost created his own palette. It's quite interesting actually just how much uh, the paintings change when the light comes in. I mean as in, as in I'm always obsessed with the artist Patrick Heron who's always talking about you know the light on any painting changes it. Some way while in galleries you never really get to see a painting properly because you get to see the light touching it. But this one, these clouds got absolutely green. Look at a yellowy kind of green when the light comes in and touches them. It's actually kind of amazing because it just whole changes, the whole painting changes. I think mean, that's beautiful to see them change in the light. And like over here, you know, even when the light floods over them. That's kind of you know, the beautiful thing about an oil painting and seeing it in a place where the light can change. If you haven't checked out Fred Cooming, I would do. He's a fascinating artist. Um, he's got an incredible touch for colour, a sense of colour. Um, yeah, I don't know why he's not described as a contemporary artist, but that's just another thing. But um, yeah, amazing colourist, amazing paintings, really worth looking at. And actually also really created in a beautiful way, beautiful structure, quite sort of mm, traditional, sort of sensible academic of putting them together, academic way of putting them together, you could say. Anyway, beautiful paintings, have a look at them. Check out Fred Cooming and um, Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe as ever, both to this arttop10.com and my other channel, Travel Dog. And so lovely. Au revoir, Hadar Fizz. Ciao, bye. Avi de Zain. See you all soon. Bye bye. Bomb buckler.